morning there, Fort Alliance, Fort Saskatchewan, and definitely our extended digital family as well. Super great to be with you for this online service this morning. Really looking forward uh, to our entire time uh, together. We want you to know that um, if you are new to our family, um, today, or if there's anything going on in your life that, that you'd like to pray through, we want to get to know you and we want to pray with you. And you can just start by simply texting us. Uh, you can uh, text um, our, uh, our, our cell line, uh, 780-604-3363, and you just put in the word welcome and we'll know that means uh, you are new and it'll give us a chance to get to know you a little bit. You can ask us any questions in there that you'd like to as well. Um, at the same time, if there's something in your world where you just need to initiate a conversation and have someone pray for you in person or um, digitally, whatever you like, um, you can text that number and, and just put in the word prayer and we would happily uh, follow up with you um, in, in that message. So please know we're here to connect and get to know you in this season. Hey, this week, big announcement um, within Alberta. Stage two reopening comes with some uh, exciting news and also some challenges that we gotta uh, overcome as a, as a community and as a church family as well. And I made a rather lengthy announcement on Friday and uh, hopefully you've got that via Facebook or YouTube or our church newsletter. Um, and if not, you can go and, and find that. So I'll save you the, the long version, but in short, Next Sunday, we want to let you know we are going to um, reopen for our first uh, church gathering uh, post-COVID, if you will. I know we're still in the midst of things, but um, we're going to reopen next Sunday. The service is going to be at 11 um, a.m., so next Sunday at 11. And there's a couple things you need to know uh, as, uh, as you prepare or anticipate perhaps coming. First, we can only host so many people. Therefore, we need you to pre-register to reserve your spot. Couple reasons. Like I said, we can only host so many, but two, we also have some requirements we need to meet in regards to just keeping track of who has been in and, and who has been out. So you can get a hold of us via text as well and let us know um, if you plan on being here next uh, Sunday at 11 a.m. and you just need to text in uh, your, your name, uh, the number of people that are coming and some contact info. We'd love for you to be a part of it, but you gotta text us, you gotta let us know you're coming and to do it uh, that way. If for some reason we fill up and we can't take everybody, we will ensure that those who um, aren't able to participate next Sunday are put at the front of the list for the week after, okay? So next Sunday, 11 a.m. here, we are going to gather. I'm so excited to see some of you, to interact um, with the social distancing measures in place, but it'll be great to be together again. Note as you come, things are not going to be normal. Please, you're going to have to be patient with us. You gotta know in advance, we are not gonna sing like we normally would sing. There's not gonna be a children's ministry like there would traditionally be children's ministry. So the kids are gonna need to be sitting with their families. I, as a parent with kids, I get it, I can deal with it. My boys will be here and they'll be sitting with us, it's okay. Um, so please know uh, that those are some of the things to, to just be aware of. All that said, I realize that in our church family, there is great diversity in where people are at and processing this reopening. We respect that, we honor that. We love you no matter what or who you are or where you were watching from. And so we are going to continue to host a digital worship experience for you. Now we have a couple technical limitations. Nope, nothing big, but we just have to be creative and overcoming. And so as a result, our digital um, worship experience, it will be um, released or uploaded for you at 7 p.m. on Sunday. So if you're gonna participate online, 7 p.m. is when to be looking um, for our service next Sunday. Again, that's stage two, super excited to be back together, and yet also super excited to rise to the challenge of coming up with a means to serve as many people people as we possibly can in the season we find ourselves.
You've heard uh, many times Pastor Ashley come up here and say thank you, and I want to say that too. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for your generosity and your giving. I've been blown away uh, by just how you have continued to support our fellowship in this season of uncertainty, and we are blessed, and therefore we will continue to strive as best we can to be a blessing as a fellowship. So thank you so much for your giving. We just want you to know we appreciate that very much. Next Sunday is going to be a little different in another note in that uh, we are going to be saying goodbye to Darcy LaRue, our children's ministry coordinator. She has done a great job for us, a fantastic job for us um, these past number of, of months that she's been on staff. But her life is going to transition her and her family to a new community. We're excited for them. We want to bless them in that. And so we want to include a time to just say goodbye and, and uh, to give them a little bit of a send off, a farewell, if you will. And so if you're coming next week and you're like me and and you've got family that's been blessed by Darcy, maybe you want to uh, come with uh, just anticipating the opportunity to say goodbye and to let her know that you've appreciated what she's done for us. So again, mental note that, that we will be saying a a farewell to uh, Darcy LaRue uh, next Sunday as well. All that said, as I wrap up here, this Sunday we're re-engaging with our Big 11 series. We're on point number six. So the sixth mini-series in this larger series, if you will, and I'm really excited to process the hope we have because of God, and it is going to be a great morning as we do that. This time, I'm going to turn this over to a, a beloved big brother in our fellowship, George. Take it away. Good morning, Fort Saskatchewan Alliance Church. Uh, it's a privilege for me to be able to say good morning to several people that are probably watching this. Um, I pray that everybody's healthy. I know there are some who are not, but I I would pray that most of us are healthy and uh, and that we'll get a blessing from the message that's gonna be brought to us today from God's Word. Uh, God's Holy Spirit is uh, bringing these information into our hearts, and we're, we're so grateful for that. And uh, let me pray for the church right now. Um, Father, we just thank you that you are the creator God, the God that knows um, the end from the beginning. And uh, we're living in part of that time between the end and the beginning. And so we we just thank you that you are the one in control and we can have complete confidence in you. We thank you for uh, sending us Holy Spirit to live within us and guide us. We thank you for that direction that we've had. Uh, We pray that uh, we will pay attention and Lord, that we would be available to be heard by you um, throughout our days, every day of our life. as we go through our days, that we'd be able to, um, as you prompt us, to pray for others, to talk to others, and that's that's a privilege that uh, is not taken away by the virus, that we can continually uh, commune with you. So we thank you for that this morning. Uh, we thank you that um, you are the one that's in charge. We. This virus thing is on our minds, all, all of our minds and our hearts. And, and Lord, as we think about that, we think about our church reopening. Uh, we pray that you would give wisdom to our staff and, and the people as, that are in charge, the elders board, that they make a decision as to when this should happen, how it should happen, that it will be done in, in conjunction with uh, government rules, and that you would protect us during that time. We don't want to spread this around any more than anybody else does. So we just pray that you would give wisdom to our staff as they deal with that. We thank you for our staff. We pray for them. And we pray for, we just thank you that they are diligent in, uh, in how they're dealing with, with our church and our people. And, and we thank you for the communication that they've had with all of us. And Lord, whoever's watching, you people that are watching today, that maybe you aren't even part of Fort Saskatchewan Alliance, we pray that your hearts will be touched by God's Holy Spirit. Lord, we recognize that no one can come to you unless the Spirit draws them. 
And so we pray for your spirit to be active today. Uh, being Sunday, Sunday, people think about why it's Sunday. We pray that your spirit would be powerful. And Lord, there are many people in our, uh, in our body here that have family and friends that don't know you. And Lord, we pray that uh, maybe today is the day that your spirit would work in our hearts and they would uh, wonder what life's all about and call out to you. So we pray that today. We pray that you will bless uh, Ken as he brings the message to us, that it would be right from God's heart and that it would penetrate our hearts. We thank you for your love for us. We pray for our government as they make the decisions in regards to uh, what's right for our health and not only just our health, but all areas of our government. And Lord, our world is uh, also in desperate need. Um, Lord, I don't even know how to pray for our world other than the fact that we know that you are the one that's in control. And we really believe that, Lord. Uh, we pray for the persecuted church, Lord, that uh, is on my heart to pray for them. Uh, there are people in prisons that are, that are really hurting, and we pray that you would just uh, suit a blessed blessing to them. Help them to realize that, as, as I just said, you are in control. So we pray for them today. And then again, I wanna pray for our, our church body here, uh, for those who are hurting. Oh Lord, reach down and touch them. Be with them in a very special way. Help them to know your peace that passes all understanding. Thank you for today. Thank you that you're going to bless us and that you are with us. And we pray in the name of Jesus our Savior. Amen.
Oh, that uh, video is really gonna serve as a starting point for us right now and an ending port point. Uh, the beauty is that new life truly comes because of God, and we're gonna process uh, that uh, this morning. Uh, let me start by saying this. Uh, scripture, when we um, read it and begin to wrestle through it, brings some tensions for us. Uh, certain tensions, it's important for us to explore them, and we're able to um, solve or resolve those tensions. Other tensions, um, they, they really become uh, things that we just have to learn to balance, if you will, in our, our day-to-day life. And what I'm talking about this morning is one of these tensions we got to process, we got to figure out. Uh, maybe one way we could say it is like this. I have had many conversations where someone will approach me and uh, as they do so, uh, they will say, you know, the evil that we see in our world, the evil that we see throughout our history, and it proves that there can't be a good or a loving God because a good and a loving God would never allow those things to happen. Maybe you've heard someone say something like that. That said, my counter is this. I actually think the evil that we see in our world, even today, but throughout history as well, is not evidence against God at all. It's actually the evidence that we need to show that we, um, people, are really who the scripture describes us as. Fallen, sinners, those who really live in and experience this broken relationship, a broken relationship with God, ourselves, with others, and with creation. The evil we see in our world is not evidence against God, it's really the evidence that condemns us. Another simple way I've heard it stated very recently is this world is a mess. (laughs) And we made it that way but God. And those two words are really the linchpin, the good news that we're gonna speak in today, but God. So here we are. We have actually been doing this um, massive Big 11 series. And within this uh, Big 11 series, we really have been doing 11 mini-series. Or or, yeah, 11 mini-series within the Big 11. And and we're just breaking down our statement of faith, which has 11 points to it. And today we come to point six, and I want to read it for you. It goes like this. Freedom from sin. Salvation has been provided only through Jesus Christ. Those who repent and believe in him are united with Christ through the Holy Spirit and are thereby regenerated. That's what we're gonna speak to today. Are thereby regenerated, justified, sanctified, and granted the gift of eternal life as adopted children of God. Really from the beginning of time, we've seen this, uh, this battle, if you will, between uh, good and, and evil. And the tension that a lot of times we, we strive to navigate this side of heaven is, are we inherently good or are we inherently evil? I mean, on one hand, I get it. Let me be real clear. All people, every single person has been created in the image of God. That regardless of where you've been, what you've been through, um, what you look like, what you believe, um, what you do in your day-to-day life, you are an image bearer of the divine living God. All people are created in the image of God, and therefore, in some capacity, we, we were truly created to be producers, and so we can produce something of value, something of good even, dare I go so far as to say, um, for the sake of others. There, there is that within us as we were created that way. However, on the flip side of that, scripture makes it really clear that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There's this reality that every single one of us has fallen. Every single one of us has born with this sinful nature Every single one of us has that which is evil as a very real possibility 
and our being. And this has to be dealt with. It has been dealt with. We're going to get there. Uh, for me personally, I remember the very first time I realized I was fallen, that I was a sinner, that I had missed the mark, if you will. I was about four or five years old. I stole something. And it seems a little maybe silly talking about a four year old, five year old stealing something, but I remember it. It's crystal clear in my mind. I stole something and I stole it from the local church I was a part of. I actually stole, as silly as it is, a pad of sticky notes like this from the secretary's desk. My parents saw me with it and confronted me and I remember instantly feeling remorse, guilt, and shame, and sobbing, and my parents took me into the, the church that I was a part of and had me apologize, and all that remorse and that guilt and that shame came, came out as I said, I'm sorry. One of uh, my favorite moments in my ministry took place a couple years ago a little boy with his mom walked into my office and his head was down and I could see the remorse in his eyes. I could see the guilt and the shame and he pulled something out of his pocket and he handed it to me and he said, Pastor Ken, I stole this from the church. And my heart was just reminded of that moment where I remember it and here he was being confronted with the reality that he too had fallen short. A silly example, but for me, like even now, I can just, I tear up telling it and I, I just get the little Holy Spirit goosebumps saying that story. We're all sinners. We all fall short. We have this nature within us that is not good. Here's part of my issue. All too often I find myself thinking these ridiculous thoughts, at least I'm better than so-and-so, or at least I'm better than such a such a generation. Problem is, it's the wrong thought pattern altogether. The mark isn't not, is not so-and-so. The mark is not such and such a generation. No, the mark is God, Jesus. And it does me no good to compare myself to so-and-so or to such-and-such. Such. I have to look at Jesus, and when I look at Jesus, I realize just how short I've fallen. That I've sinned. The Old Testament prophet words it like this, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? That's within all of us, and it is not good and the evil that we see in our world today and the evil that we see throughout history see evidence that we need to prove we really are whom the scriptures say we are, a fallen, broken people. But as I already mentioned, there's these two words, but God, oh this is good, but God, I want to take us this morning to the book of Titus, chapter 3, uh, verses 3 to 7. I just want to look through it real quick with us. This is incredible. But God, it changes everything when God stepped into our story and made a way for that um, evil, for those ways that are not good to be dealt with. And this passage perfectly outlines that for us. Let me start by reading it. Verse 3 goes like this. Once we too were foolish and disobedient. We were misled because we were misled and became slaves to many lusts and pleasures. Our lives were full of evil and envy and we hated each other. This is the human condition. And not just for this particular people group in this particular location at this particular um, time in history. Nah, this is the human condition and here's what that means. You and me, we're dead. We are spiritually dead. In comparison to God and who he is, we are dead in our sin. 
Verse 4, here we go, I love it. But when God, our Savior, revealed his kindness and love, he saved us not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. This is so incredible. See, when we come to know God, when we come into relationship with Jesus, when that brokenness is is restored, if you will, a miraculous work takes place in us. God doesn't just take something that was kind of good or a little bit okay and make it better. No, not at all. He takes something that was completely dead and makes it alive. I'll show you. He saved us, not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sin giving us new birth and new life through the Holy Spirit. This is how it's worded in our translation, a great modern translation, if you will, but this word um, in its uh, more accurate original language, new birth, would be regenerated. The very word that we read from our statement of faith. Salvation is only through Jesus Christ, and when we come to faith in him, there's this regenerate work that happens within us. We go from being dead in sin to being made alive in Christ. A new birth, he makes us new. It's a miracle, you can't describe it, you can't fully explain it, but it's something that takes place within the core of who we are, where Jesus, through Holy Spirit, makes us, makes me new. That's a beautiful work that he does for me and for you. I'll give you one more fun story. Uh, Somewhat a bit of a stretch, if you will, but ah, that's my favorite character in the Marvel Universe, or one of my favorites anyway. I love action hero movies. Um, It gives me a way to like just put off the stress of the world for a couple hours. And one of my favorite characters is the Wolverine. Now here's what you need to know about the Wolverine if you're not into this. Wolverine regenerates, meaning that when he is hurt or when he is injured or when he is on the verge of the cusp of death, he is made completely new by this power of regeneration. And this serves as a great picture for us right now. See, when we were dead, Jesus, through Holy Spirit, unleashes this power of regeneration where we are made alive, where where there's a new birth, where we are born again. And if this is you today, this should give you incredible hope in the season we find ourselves in. You are made new. God is doing what he needs to do within you. And if you don't know Jesus, this is available. This is possible for you, made new. I wanna read the rest of it and I'll tell you how. He washed away our sins, giving us new birth and new life through the Holy Spirit. He generously poured out the Spirit upon us through Jesus Christ our Savior because of his grace. He made us right in his sight and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. You're here this morning in this online digital worship experience and you've been wrestling through this brokenness that you see not only around us but within you, Jesus. Jesus has come. See, he literally walked this earth 2,000 years ago, and as he walked this earth, he declared that he was God in flesh, God as a human being, that he had come to make a way for us to know God and to restore all things. And then, oh, and then he took upon himself my sin, your sin, the sin of everyone, and endured a horrific 
brutal, brutal death that we could be washed and cleansed. But Jesus didn't stay dead. He proved that he was God. He proved that he had overcome this spiritual death that we live in. And he proved it by rising from the dead. He's alive. And today he is still leading and guiding. He is both king of all and friend for those who come to him. And you can experience what it means to be made new, regenerated, by coming to Jesus and saying, Jesus, I am sorry. I'm sorry because I'm a sinner. Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me of that sin. And now my life is yours. Use me for your honor and glory. It's as simple as that. You want to know what it means to be made new? Jesus, I'm sorry. Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, my life is yours. This morning, we're going to take time to reflect on that. To reflect on that via communion. And Pastor Ashley, in just a moment, will lead us through that. And I hope and I pray that for every single one of us in our home or in our office or wherever we find ourselves sitting watching this, that we might be reminded that through the cross, Jesus shedding his blood and giving of his body, we're made new. And the hope that comes gives us what we need for today, tomorrow, and the seasons and the years to come. Again, I love you. I miss you. Looking forward to seeing some of you in person next week and seeing hopefully all of you again online. Take care.
there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. What a privilege it is to be able to come to the table uh, to remember the sacrifice of Jesus. And even though we're each in our own homes, it is amazing that we can still lift our hearts together as one to thank Jesus uh, for the sacrifice that he made for us on the cross. And so why do we gather for communion? Why is it so important to us as Christians? And you know, there are a lot of reasons, but the two that I'm gonna talk about quickly today are that we gather to proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We also, when we take communion, are declaring uh, that we need the sacrifice of Jesus. As we eat the bread and drink from the cup, uh, we are saying again and again and again uh, that we are sinners in need of forgiveness, uh, that we need uh, the work that Jesus did for us. And as we uh, find ourselves taking those moments and remembering, preparing our hearts, uh, repenting, um, and asking Jesus you know, to, to cleanse us and to be with us, we remember that we are people, uh, a needy people, that we need God more than we could ever think or ever imagine. So I wanna take just a moment right now uh, for us to prepare our hearts together uh, before we take these elements. So please pray with me. Heavenly Father, We come before you and God, we are grateful that we can come to the table. We are so thankful for the sacrifice of Jesus. I am amazed that I don't have to struggle alone, that I don't need to uh, try to produce my own righteousness, that I don't need to try to be good enough, that Jesus did that all for me. And God, when you look at me, you see the righteousness of your son and that is amazing and I praise you for that. And Lord, as we seek to prepare our hearts, God, I pray that you would bring anything to our minds uh, that we need to confess, uh, that we need to ask forgiveness for. Lord, help us to take uh, these elements in a way that honors you, recognizing our need. And Lord, as we recognize our need, we don't wanna sit and flog ourselves and feel guilty, but what we want is for that recognition of need to point our hearts in, in celebration towards Jesus. We are so thankful for what you did. You've forgiven us for so much and we are incredibly grateful. So God, I pray that as we take these elements that you would be honored, that you would be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're gonna be reading this morning uh, from 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23 to 27. And Paul says, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat together. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's drink together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice. Thank you that you've given us a way to remember, that you've given us a way to proclaim. We praise you, we worship you, we honor you. We are so grateful, Jesus. In your name, amen. But God, and we are so grateful, that Jesus has ensured a way for us to know God, for us to walk with Jesus. And he is available um, to you and for you and brings hope in every season, but particularly this one. 
If you are today in need of a little bit of encouragement or want someone to pray as we wrap up, we want you to know once again, Pastor and Ashley and I will be in our prayer rooms uh, following the, the service today. So at 11 o'clock this morning, you just need to go to our website, fortsaskalliance.com click the online gatherings tab and you can just scroll down and find the prayer room portion and we would be happy to pray with you. Just click the link and you'll be brought into a room um, to just meet with us privately and to pray through whatever it is you'd like to pray through. Um, As we end up uh, or end our time here uh, again, I love you. I miss you. So excited for next week. God bless. Remember you were created for such a time as this.